I'm so glad that you've tuned in to one of the sermons from St Mary's. If you're new to our church and would like to find out more about being involved, please visit our website and drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Genesis chapter 1, commencing at verse 1, and is on page 1 of your church Bibles. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was ev evening, and there was morning the first day. This is the word of the Lord. So the uh, reading is taken from the Gospel according to John, reading from uh, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome come it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. This is the word of the Lord. Well, good morning, everyone, and good morning to all those at home this morning on Zoom. It's a great pleasure to be with you on this beautiful day. And uh, I, I've just come back from Switzerland, where I've been for two weeks on a mission there. So um, I, 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 I'm full of the creation. I think we might have had all of chapter one. I don't know what happened there. But um, if you want to open your Bibles, it might be useful to see Genesis chapter one uh, as, as um, I talk about things. It's rather a long chapter, I know. But uh, anyway, our topic this morning, Trinity, the creative Trinity. When I arrived late in Geneva due to a delayed flight, from Bristol on a Monday evening two weeks ago. My friend and I set out on a local bus to find the small hotel we booked, an auberge, uh, and soon it was in total darkness because it was midnight. It was too far to go on to Zermatt, which was where we were des destined for next day. We were on an evangelical mission to look after a 150 year old church in Zermatt or St. Peter's for two weeks. So here we were, midnight in the dark, this little hotel place was shut, closed, total darkness. And we didn't, couldn't even find the front door. Anyway, we were contemplating, well, it wasn't too cold if we have to sleep on a bench for the night. When all of the, well, we suddenly realized perhaps we'd try a prayer. You know, that's what we were, the business we were in, praying and expecting results. So we said our prayer, and almost instantly there was a response quite remarkable. This young man in the darkness was going towards the hotel, 
And so we called to him and he came over. And it turned out that he lived there with his family. And when we explained our predicament, he said that his wife might be able to help us as she was the waitress in the restaurant there. So she was asleep apparently, but he woke her up, the only one who could help, and she appeared in her pajamas, full of goodwill, and in no time had contacted the caretaker who came over with the key to our room. All was well. How grateful we were to have some sleep and to know that the power of God is always near to help us. Today is St. Trinity Sunday, celebrated a week after Pentecost. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was sent to earth after Jesus returned to heaven in order that the Holy Spirit would indwell every believer as a counsellor and a guide. Together with God the Father and Jesus the Son, he is the third member of the Trinity. The Trinity is not a word found in the Bible, but the reality of the three of them always working together in unity is seen right at the start of Genesis and mentioned several times in the New Testament, particularly by St. Paul. At the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan by John the Baptist, we see all three connected together as the Holy Spirit descends on the head of Jesus in the form of a dove, and the voice of God the Father calls to him from heaven, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. The Trinity are relational and yet diverse, each playing a different role. In the first verse of Genesis, we see that the mighty spirit was hovering over the waters to bring order out of chaos. Somebody has said it was like a broody hen wafting her wings over her eggs. The activity of the Trinity to create everything in the heavens and earth is then described as happening over six days, with the final day, seventh day, being a day of rest for God. The length of a day is unknown, but it is the sequence of events that is important. The spoken word of God commanded the creation to appear out of nothing. Hebrews 11, 3. And as we heard from the Gospel of John, it is Jesus the Son, the living word, who does this by merely speaking. On days one to three, God separated and gathered light from darkness and water from above and from water below with the formation of dry earth. Then the next three days, days three to six, saw making and filling of what he separated, of the air with birds, the sea with fish, and the earth with plants and animals, including man. The sun and moon and stars were made on day four. Only their importance in giving light was emphasized, probably so that they would not become objects for worship, being all too common for the sun to be worshipped in this world. But God minimized it. On the day of rest, day seven, the creative trinity pronounced everything to be very good. A regular rest day was modeled by God, and this is his gift to humanity, a Sabbath rest. During the COVID pandemic, the imposed change in lifestyle forced many of us to slow down and take more rest, vowing never to return to the former rush and busyness. 
I wonder if you're still managing to keep this up. I'm trying. We see in verse 26, I'll read verse 26 if we didn't have it. Um, verse 26, then God said, let us make mankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So we see in this verse that out of all the range of creatures God called, God called one species to be special, human beings who were made in the image and likeness of God. So what does this actually mean? Well, I could have kept you all day with all the different ideas that there are in the commentaries and that have been spoken about this. But most of them would support the view that having God's image is all about our relationship with him, knowing him intimately and personally. The New Testament makes it very clear that when we see the true image of God in this world, we see it in Jesus Christ. For example, St. Paul in 2 Corinthians 4 speaks of the glory of Christ, who is the likeness of God. Jesus himself said, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. When the word became flesh, the eternal blueprint, who is Jesus, took on a physical body as well as having divine consciousness. These two elements, physicality and divine consciousness, exist in all living things. Psalm 98 talks about rivers clapping their hands and mountains singing for joy. This is why when we are in places of scenic beauty, we can often sense the presence of God. I certainly did when I was in the Alps last week. Scripture, Romans 8, tells us that nature too experiences death and decay due to the sin that came into the world and is waiting to be fully restored when Jesus returns. As God's image and representatives on earth, human beings have been given the responsibility of taking care of all the animals and plants he has created. Haphazard waste disposal, particularly of plastic into the oceans and rivers, has had dire consequences for the food chain involving fish. Just as pesticides on land and removal of trees and habitats have endangered many species, particularly insects and birds. As we become increasingly aware of it, each one of us can take personal action to save the planet because it matters to God who loves every part of his creation. The God we have come to know and worship in Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit is a trinity of persons who are lovingly created together. They are sometimes depicted as being in a joyful circular dance, perichoresis in Greek, means rotation. Being made in the divine image is a status not given to animals nor angels, only to human beings. We have the task and glory of representing him here on earth. God has made an ordered universe where the laws of physics, chemistry and biology are fixed. And we can discover through scientific investigation 
how it is the work of an, an intelligent divine creator whose intelligence is far superior to our own. Science and faith should never be in conflict. As we read in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 25, for the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. It has been said that a person with experience or a testimony is never at the mercy of one with an argument. God is calling each one of us into a personal relationship with him. We can taste and see that he is good. I can vouch for the fact that he has never let me down. And since my husband died 27 years ago, he has been my all-sufficient one. He also calls us to be loving and forgiving in our relationships with each other. In dying for each one of us on the cross, how could he have shown greater love to you and me? We will never fully understand the depth and height and breadth of his love. It is amazing that one day, if we hold on to our faith, he will present us holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. So let us enjoy the fellowship of the Lord's Sabbath today as we reflect his image and say in our hearts this little prayer. Loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for all you are and all you do, all you mean, we give you our thanks and offer our worship in the name of Christ. Amen. And after the service, prayer is available. If you'd like a touch from heaven, if you have a prayer need, come and find me or a member of the clergy or the prayer team. Uh, I'll be over at the sanctuary at the back. I'll be very happy to pray with you.